I've had this channel for quite some time and I've been through many a tripods everywhere from my first ever tripod, which was about eight pounds on Amazon, which was the cheapest thing I've ever had in my life, all the way through to the likes of carbon fiber ones from like KF Concept, which were really good. Currently using the KF Concept one at the moment, but the head on it is actually a fluid head. But today we're looking at a, an entire fluid tripod, a little bit more of a professional style tripod to try and get things a little bit more that's for, I say professional, making things a little bit easier for myself. So, pick it up. So, it is heavy. So, today we're looking at the Carver Fluid Tripod. Could be interesting. So, let's get into it. and we are talking about Windows 10 Pro OEM key. Already an amazing deal because of the autumn big sale. So from this process, all we need to do is platform, region, tags, as well as go to buy now. So we'll click on buy now, it'll then transfer us over to this page. From here, we down the promotions, what we need to do is type in SKJT and click on apply. Reduce your price down from 17 pound and a penny down to 13 pound 61. So from here, all we need to do is go down to submit order. As soon as you've done that, you just select your payment type and of course, we'll go from there. So as soon as you've actually bought it and went through the process, you'll be brought to this page. From here, what we need to do is click on the green tab, which says view, view keys and codes. So what you need to do is click on get the key and the middle code is gonna be your activation key. Mine's gonna be blurred out, but yours won't be, so don't worry. So what we need to do is highlight this code, click on control C, or you can right click and just click copy. Then what we need to do is go over the settings, top left, find in settings, type in activation. Where it says change product key, give that a click. And then where it says product key, just copy and paste, well, just paste your code into there. Mine will be blurred, yours won't be. Do that, click on next. So there we go, Windows has checked it and you are now ready to activate it. Just click on activate and you are pretty much good to go. So I don't have much space in this room, but we're going to try and do the best. It's currently 10 o'clock at night, very dark outside, and I'm trying to get this done. So so I'll get everything out and we'll start going from there. So this is the extremely heavy tripod, and I'm going to get everything else out of the bag and we're going to go from it. Go through everything, see what we've got, see what we don't have, and we'll go from there. So to start off, we do get the little silica bag, which seems to come with everything. Just everything to do with like, stops moisture getting in during shipping. We do get the very large, obviously the bag, uh, the Carver bag, which is extremely strong, sturdy. So we don't have to worry about that. The bag itself does also come with a branded wrist strap, a wrist strap, shoulder strap. So obviously if you're going to be carrying this around, don't worry about it. And we also get, we'll come to that bit in a second. We also get a warranty card, a little user manual, going to tell you everything there and then we also get two allen keys that's just going to be for all the ports on the side over time they will get loose naturally um happens with all tripods after like extensive amounts of use um so they give you them as well to provide i think that's a four and a five mil i think that's a four and a five mil allen key and then we also get the camera plate i don't actually know the proper name for them port plate tripod plate camera plate it's a plate and then we also get the actual arm which we'll go into in a second. So I'm going to move that to one side. So let's bring this closer. So the rocker plate itself is definitely different to some of the ones I've worked in in the past. We do get two thread sizes. I think that's a half inch and a quarter inch or around that area. So they do give you two different sizes to actually get this tightened up depending on your camera or the mounting hardware. And they're both tightened up by Allen keys on the back, but they've also got a flat section so you can use the likes of a, a, a coin. But it does have this little popper, so you can just pop that out. And then if you don't want to use one of them, or if you want to use the other one, it just slides out. And then there you go. Simple as that. Really quick and easy. I do like it. Makes life a little bit easier. So like I said, we also get the arm as well. So this attaches to the side of the fluid head, allowing you to move, maneuver it a little bit more smoother, a little bit more easier, getting those nicer shots. And then, of course, we have the tripod. How am I going to do this? So I'm going to take the fluid head off first, we'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about the tripod itself. So, the fluid head. This is, by the way, this is the Carver BV30L. That's the one we're looking at today. The one I'm currently using is the K3. 
So I do have two of these. I'm currently using one right now, which I'll put a clip up as well. Uh, but this is the BV30L. I'm not sure if this is newer or... Oh, I've just realized something. So you actually get two plates. Are they the same? They are pretty much exactly the same. Apart from this one has a little release button. I don't know if you see that. I'm not sure what that is for, but this one has a release button. So you actually get two plates. I never knew that. So pretty much the way this is, obviously, it's a fluid head. It's a lot larger than, obviously, your normal tripod head, like I said. But a few things about it. So the plate itself does have a quick release. So if I slide that on there. So as we can see with the plate, just to start off, it only goes so far. Button on the side, click the button in, allows you to slide it out. Same again, and then it'll only, only go so far. When you get it in the set, this one on the right here. There we go. Trying to watch the screen at the same time. That tightens it up, obviously, but it also has a release mechanism on the side. So if you've got your camera sat there, I don't know, say for instance like that, you're not going to be able to get the full twist. So what this allows you to do is pull it, twist it away, and then you can loosen it off, which is quite cool. It may be small, but it means a lot, especially when you're trying to get things sorted. We also have a thread on the side as well. This is going to be for like accessories if you want to add the likes of a microphone arm or even a screen like you can get like little digital screens for your camera for the likes of mine i'm using i'm now using the sony let me think about it sony a7 III so it's a obviously more of a mirrorless camera so the screen doesn't flip out it's stationary so if you want to use like a screen you can attach this onto the side and you're pretty much good to go uh so yeah on the side here we do have one little thread here so Unscrewing this is going to allow us to have movability of the actual head itself. Oh, might need to do that a little bit more. Is a little bit stiff because I have yet to use it. That's better. So that's going to allow us to have the full maneuverability going that way. And then, of course, on the back here, we do have another one, which is going to allow us to use it to actually screw it the other way, which is quite cool. I like it. On either side of here, we do have a thread size with teeth. So what this is going to be is for the actual breaker arm, depending if you're right or left-handed. It all depends on preference. And then instead of having to rely on friction, it actually relies on the teeth themselves to actually make it stay in place. So if we see the teeth, so get close up. If we see the teeth there, so when you tighten it up, it's going to rely on the teeth uh, to actually keep it in position instead of like having to have rely on friction and tightening the hell out of it. So that's one thing I did enjoy. Obviously, this is maneuverable. You can have it on the right and left. The only difference compared to this one, uh, the get the name of it, the BV30L and the K3, is the arm itself is telescopic. So it has like a little reach on it so you can pull it out and then push it up. Apart from that, I think they're relatively the exact same. Same features and everything, which is pretty cool. So I am going to take that off just for a second. So it's out of the way. But apart from that, that's pretty much everything there is on the head, apart from, obviously, we do have the spirit level. So we do have the spirit bubble level just there. So obviously, you're going to be able to use this for if you're on an uneven surface or anything like that, making sure that you are central. Some clearly massive differences already compared to your traditional three-leg tripod. Each one of the supporting legs has five steel bars. The two on the outside are thinner. The one in the center is more of a thicker bar. And then, of course, we have some quick releases there because we can move this up and down. So, as we can see already, we do have a lock and bar here. Nice little carver logo going on there. And they're bolted either side right here. So, you can just push that down and it's going to lock the legs. So, you're not going to have to worry about the legs jumping in unless you put a mass amount of pressure on. So, that's a cool feature that you don't get with a lot of other tripods. Um, obviously, this being a little bit more professional style, that's what we're dealing with, which is pretty cool. Now, the one thing I did like about this is the feet. Now, if you are filming or recording on an uneven surface, <clears throat> the feet here are actually on a ball joint, so you can move them and manipulate them to actually fit your needs. So if I do it on the side, it might be a bit clearer. So as we can see right here, it is on a ball joint just in the center there. So depending on where you've got this set, you can move this around to actually manipulate it to allow it to be as perfectly level as possible. And that I do like. So... All housing is pretty much all metal apart from the bases of the supporting legs as well as the brackets for actually extending the legs out. They are plastic. They are quite high quality plastic and they are pretty much bolted down everywhere, shape or form, whether that be rivets or actual bolts. So it definitely is safe and secure. So what I'm going to do is 
Ah, right, got you, got you, got you. So it's got two different variations of height. Obviously, we've went through one. I can't show you them fully extended. I will put a picture up of what it goes from the smallest to the tallest, just to give you a little bit of an insight. But if I do extend this out, loosen that off, so we can see already, it is a massive, a massive amount of height. So if you're 15 foot tall and you enjoy taking photos, this is pretty much the perfect tripod for you. <laughs> I'm six foot, so... I don't really think I'm going to be getting much out of this. But like I said, tripod up. And I'm currently like at my ceiling. So again, and there we go. So yeah, it doesn't really give you a good representation, but I will put some photos up of what it looks like um, from the website and all that good stuff, what they actually have. But you do have full extension going on there. That just turns, push that up, tighten it. It's just a sim it's a, like a simple right-left lock. So it doesn't have to, you don't have to keep unscrewing it. Simple one rotation, push it in, tighten it up, you're done. So you're not going to have to worry about messing around, trying to get it to the perfect height. And then, of course, we have the ball joint feet on the bottom here, which is going to allow us to get that perfect line. We also have another one on the top here, which is just similar. We just pull that down, and then what this does, it separates, I believe. Ah, so it separates the other three legs. So you've got three legs that come out this way, just like that. So you've got three legs, so you go from two legs to three legs, and then the center leg comes out. So like I said, if you are going to be filming some absolutely ridiculously high photos, um, then yeah, this is going to be pretty much perfect for you. But I have to admit, obviously for me, myself, I have a small YouTube channel. That's all I have. So having something like this isn't going to be massively beneficial in the lines of professional photography, cinema photography, all that good stuff. This is pretty much something for me just to have more sturdy, because where I've got the camera now, we're having the new camera, uh, I think it's the Sony A7 III, um, and then I've got a 24 to 240 mil lens, I think on there, so it does allow me to get a much wider angle compared to the Lumix uh, G95, which I'm using as my top camera now, so yeah, definitely an upgrade for the cameras, but I have to admit, it is pretty cool, I am new to these, I've not used these before, so I am extremely new to them, um, so it's definitely something I'm going to have to get used to. But the one thing I have forgot to show you and mention, I will put this back on here. It simply just screws back on like you would a traditional tripod head. So underneath here, can you see this little bit here? So the actual head itself does unscrew to allow you to have full change of this. So if you are physically on a massively uneven surface, all you have to do is unscrew that and you have like this ball joint here as well. Then all you have to do is tighten it up, watch the spirit level, as well as the guides on your camera, um, the balancing lines on the camera. And then what you can do is just simply twist that and you have full circle movement there as well, which is really cool. I haven't yet to have that on the tripod. It makes life a lot easier when you're trying to get things balanced and lined up, which is really cool. And then, for instance, if I get this put onto here, like I said, I definitely thought these would be a lot more expensive. So we've got the arm on there. And what it allows us to do is got the camera on top. Got everything nice and loose. And then what we can is just with a touch of a finger is just slightly move it. And you can see how slow that is moving physically. And then obviously I can go up, down, left, right, center. And then it just allows for a much smoother lock. And obviously the good thing is pull it all the way up, all the way down. And then it'll just center itself, which is really cool. I didn't realize it did this. Um, the K3 also does it. So if you are pull, if you do pull this all the way down, I don't know, say if you're trying to get a good shot of someone coming into the scene, let go of it, and then it actually resets itself back to what it was, which is really cool in my eyes. I do enjoy that feature. But like I said, this is the cover of BV30L. Really enjoyed this video. Um, Obviously, I'm not a professional photographer or anything like that, so I don't know the massive ins and outs of everything there is to know about it. That's what I mean. It's definitely a lot easier. Like I said, I have a fluid head on a basic tripod behind me, so it's a lot easier moving things around. But I do really enjoy this. Like I said, there is probably some videos out there will tell you purely into depth everything you need to know about it, about like the color types to make the model, everything down to what the materials are made of. That's not the idea of here. This is just pretty much a basic tutorial of what it looks like, what it's all about, is it any good? And I have to say yes, definitely. Like I said, if you are like an absolute fanatic of when it comes to photography, this is going to be your next best friend. Just remember, if you're not 15 foot tall, don't put it on the highest setting. All I can really said. But I suppose if you're going to use it on the highest setting, which we did show a photo, I'll show it again now just so we can see. 
when it comes to actually using the arm, I think you'll be okay because it is quite a lengthy arm. Like I have to admit, you do get quite a large amount. So of course, guys, when it came to this one, I definitely, I think, I think I've been pronouncing it wrong as well. I've been saying Kaver. I think it's Kaya. Don't quote me on it, but I think it is Kaya. If you do want to upgrade the tripod you are currently using and you want to uh, change over to something like a fluid tripod, I really do recommend it, especially if you are starting out. For the price of it, I was really, really surprised. There is some out there on the market that you can spend upwards of 500 to up to a thousand pounds, which if you're starting out, it's probably not worth it. But for reviewing something like this, I really do recommend it. So if you do have any questions about what we have reviewed today, please do drop it down in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to help. But as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I really do hope you have an amazing day.